United States of America and the world listens as President Lyndon B. Johnson addresses a joint session of Congress. The occasion is solemn, his tone somber. I am here today to say I need your help. I cannot bear this burden alone. I need the help of all Americans in all America. John Kennedy's death commands what his life conveyed, that America must move forward. The new president is quickly caught up in the many burdens of his office. He confers with Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara on military problems around the world, and is briefed by Secretary of State Rusk on foreign affairs. Overnight, the strong continuity of the presidential office is apparent. He welcomes the counsel of President Eisenhower, partisan politics forgotten. He then held his first meeting with the Joint Chiefs of Staff and emphasized to them that he expects their cooperation in fulfilling his pledge to get a dollar's worth of value for each military dollar spent. Later, the president wrote letters to 7,500 defense contractors asking them to strive to reduce costs. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of mourners continue to file past the grave of President Kennedy. It is a quiet throng, a prayerful one, and hundreds leave simple bouquets with their tears. With the eternal flame at the grave casting a bright memorial, a sorrowing crowd files by each day in unending stream until the gates of Arlington are closed. It has been announced that an architect has been commissioned to design a monument for the site, a monument to the martyred leader. At President Johnson's Washington home in Spring Valley, the first family of the nation pose for their portrait. They are photographed in the home where they will remain until Mrs. Kennedy is able to move from the White House. The First Lady, and standing beside the President, is Linda Bird, 19, on the left, and Lucy Baines, 16. It might be noted that all of the family have the initials LBJ. The eyes of the free world are on President Johnson. The demands of the office have made many men great. Mr. Johnson brings to his task the experience of 30 years on Capitol Hill and the respect of all men in the halls of Congress. An era in America's life has ended, and a new one begins.